and through that we're horizontal, we're connected to each other. That's really kingdom. How many believe that Jesus is sufficient for everything we need? Amen. Jesus the Messiah has paid for everything we need. Amen. You believe that? Amen. You know, the great failure of Israel was the people never trusted God was able. And he deliberately put them in the places where they had to rely on him. He sent them into the wilderness. But he didn't mean for them to just be there in the wilderness. He meant for them to learn to trust him. It says he tested them at bitter waters of Meribah. He tested them. What was he testing for? He wanted to know if they really believed God was able to do what he said he could do. Now, we, how many here really trust Jesus Christ for your salvation? How many believe he's able to supply all your needs according to his riches and glory? Well, in the next few years or however long it is, that's going to be tested. But we have to be connected. The secret of the kingdom is relationship to Jesus Christ. He is the way to the Father. Now, I'm going to give you a scripture, and we're going to do it by singing. <laughs> to open up. It's Psalms 104. 100, verse 4. So, this tells the secret of how you connect to God. We enter his gates with thanksgiving in our hearts and into his courts with praise, be thankful unto him and bless his name. So the song's a little changed, but we will enter his gates with thanksgiving in our hearts. We will enter his courts with praise. We will say this is the day that the Lord has made. Well, we'll rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. So... Do we really believe that Jesus is able to supply all your needs according to your riches in glory? Now, the first church knew the secret, and Paul even indirectly goes right back to this as being the secret, what happens in the church. Go down to the next scripture, starting in 1 Corinthians. I skipped the first couple. You notice. What is it, brother? When you come together, every one of you has a what? Psalm, a song. We all should have a song. And what? A doctrine, a tongue, a revelation, an interpretation. But what do we all have to do? Let it be for building one another up. We go upward, vertical, we touch Father, and what do we do? It goes horizontal and it touches the people around us. But it's always building up the people around us. You know, what's the matter with the church in America? We've condemned but never built up the world. I said, we condemned. When Jesus came, did he come to condemn? No. He said, they're already condemned. But I came that they might have life and more abundant life. And that's really the mandate for the church. We are the ones who know the secret of life. Our job is not to condemn, but to uplift. In the service, 
Our job is not to condemn you. It's to uplift you. Okay? The next one. Then, what do we do in the service? Don't be drunk with wine. Okay? We all agree. Right? <laughs> We're not going to get drunk on wine, but it doesn't say don't get drunk on spirit. Okay? But be filled with the Spirit. What are we supposed to do in the service is renew and get more of the Spirit of God before we leave. How many know that's how God is going to supply all our needs is first we connect through the Spirit. So, but speak to yourselves. We're supposed to literally speak to one another in psalms, in hymns, and spirit songs. I say we're supposed to speak to one another. In songs, hymns, spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Giving thanks. What did we say? We enter his gates with thanksgiving, thanksgiving his courts with praise. praise, and then there's worship. It's a progression. First of all, thanks. Paul get, says give thanks. He says to speak in psalms and hymns. They are praise songs. But we're supposed to get to the place where we have melody in our hearts. And that's when, how do you know the difference between worship and praise is you start affecting your love in your heart for God. Amen. There's a connection, a love connection. Right. That is worship. So today you're going to participate. Everybody needs to participate in a church service. Amen. We're going to let you tell what you're thankful for. Okay? That's the beginning of worship of God. You have to have a thankful attitude no matter what circumstance you're in. Let's go to the next one. I'll show you the same pattern. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts to which you're called into one body and be ye, what we say the first step is, Thankful. So Paul uses order of Psalms 100, verse 4. Be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell richly in wisdom and teaching and admonishing one another. Now we're supposed to have the wisdom of the word. We're supposed to have teaching of the word. But we are to admonish one another in psalms and hymns and songs of the Spirit. <laughs> Did he say the same order that Psalms 104 has? Thankfulness, then psalms, hymns, and then spirit songs. Worship. Real worship comes when you really come to the place where something happens in your heart and in your spirit. You can sing the same song and you're just singing the words, but when it gets to your heart and it moves something within you, it's okay to cry in the presence of God. We're all going to be affected differently. I'm not going to judge you by how you're moved. But we all need to reach the place where God does something inside of us in our spirits. Because God is a spirit. They that worship him just have to or just if you want to. No, Jesus didn't say that. He said they must worship him in spirit. Spirit and in truth. So 
That's what we want to do today. We are to sing with grace in our hearts to the Lord. Why do we need grace? I need grace just to sing, to carry a tune. I need the power of God helping me even do that. I cannot do it alone. I need the power of God. So, whatever you do, in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. Now, what are you thankful for? Amen. What are you thankful for? Some of y'all have heard this on Monday night and Wednesday night, but to share again, my children have both had some visions and dreams. Uh, Kara told me a little while back that she saw little sparks, little fires on the church. And she said, then they all came together for one big explosion. And that's really my desire to see the, these little fires break out and then one big explosion. Then Aaron came to me and he said, Mama, I had a dream. I said, what did you dream? He said, we were at church. Everybody was there. And he started naming over everybody he saw in his dream. He said, but everybody was robots. And uh, he said, and the other thing is, he said, I looked everywhere for God, but I couldn't find him. So that really stirred something up in me. I thought, God... We've got to have your presence. He's the gas on the logs. If we're going to have these fires, we've got to have him. We've got to put aside our mechanical way of doing things. We can't keep doing what we've been doing and expect a different results. If we want fire, we've got to have his presence. Yes. This is our choice in the next few days. We're just going to be robots. Or we're going to flame up. We all agreed at first that Jesus was sufficient. He's all we needed. Yes, yeah, send the fire. But God said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all of these things shall be added to you but there's a secret we want things added to us without seeking him and his righteousness Lynn and I have made a commitment every chance we can get we're going to pray we've had wonderful presence of God in our house the last couple The other night, I go to work early on Wednesdays because we have a prayer meeting and I've got a spiritual son who's leading it and I want to be there and just encourage him. And so I go in the other room. I don't want Lynn to have to go to bed that early, so I go in the other room and sleep. I've got to woke at 12.30 the other night. And I thought Lynn had cut the light on in the room. And I thought, I must have overslept. My alarm didn't go off and I didn't hear it. Or, well, I looked around. And all of a sudden the room got dark. I went in trying to figure out what was going on. And I went back to bed then with Lynn. But his presence was there. didn't say anything. I didn't have a great revelation. But yet he did say something. All I need is his presence. Mm -hmm. You need his presence. But we won't have his presence if we're robots. Right. And we just have a form. We come together. 
It's up to each one of us to do our part in the service. I hope you felt something today. I certainly felt his presence among us. And that's what it's all about. Him. Yes. And his presence. He can change our situations in a heartbeat. But we must have his presence. I don't want to play church. No. I want his presence here. I want him in my house. Amen. Lynn and I are seeking after him in our house together. You know, we we actually find it difficult to pray together. We have for a while, but you know, it's been so wonderful the last few nights praying together. What we're going to do now, I hope you read the bulletin. But right now, we're going to bless one another before we leave here. Just before we do that, I want to add something. <clears throat> some of you may know this and some of you may not know this, but Harvest Christian Fellowship was birthed out of missions. You know, and John and I came here uh, we helped Pastor Larry Nelson was the one who actually founded this church and we were with him in the beginning and then nine months later we nine months we uh, took over the, the leadership here <clears throat> and missions has always been strong in our hearts I believe that the reason why this church is still here is because we have faithfully every month off the top, tithed into missions. And I, th I believe God has met the, re the requirements, financial requirements here, as a result of that. And it's in John and I's hearts to do missions. We've been on many mission trips, but we've not been a whole lot lately. We know that God has told us over and over again there would come a time when we would be going so much we wouldn't get our bags unpacked hardly till we were packing again. Now, we're getting a little older, and we haven't seen that yet, so we're expecting it to be real soon. At any rate, we've sort of gotten away a little bit from talking and emphasizing missions the way we used to, and we felt like we need to correct that. So on January 27th, that's the last Sunday of this month, Pastor Larry Nelson will be here. He's going to talk to us about missions. In April, the end of April, Pastor John is going to Malawi, in the end of September, Brandon and Ruth, and if y'all don't know this, they're getting married 20, September 27th, and as their honeymoon, they wanted to take a mission trip with John and I. So we are planning to go to the Philippines, and that is open to anybody else who would like to go. <coughs> now, if you're like me, when I first started thinking about missions, I thought, I don't have the money, Lord. Then I was ready to discount it. Let me tell you what to do. We've told this to people for years. Ask the Lord if that's what he wants. If he wants you to go, there'll be a desire within you to go. And then you need to find you something, whether it be a, a mayonnaise container or an old basket or soup can, whatever it is, and any extra money that comes across your path, put it in that. We call it a God box. And that's any money that's unexpected. Somebody hands you $5 unexpectedly, it goes in your God box. If you pick up a 20 off the, the uh, asphalt in the parking lot, that goes in your God box. If you work overtime that you're not expecting, it goes in the God box. That's how we know that God really wants us to go because he begins bringing the money for us to go. So if you feel like God is speaking to you to go on that trip, uh, let us know because we want to pray and undergird you. And I encourage you all to ask the Lord, whether you're young or old, whether rich or poor, it doesn't make any difference. God will use you. And many times you might be the very one that he wants to send because you have a specific message. Sister Audrey went with us to the Philippines quite a few years ago now. I 
but let me tell you, it was she was a powerhouse. Her and there was a, a friend of hers that used to be here in the church was a little bit older than, than Audrey when we went, and, and they just did a super job. They had those people eating out of their hands. So, and we had young people. Chuck, that was his first mission trip, and, you know, they followed after him like they called him Goliath. <laughs> But, but they just desire to hear. And God has stuff in you. He has it in you already. Whether you know it or not, it's there for somebody else. And that's what we really want to do before you leave today. We want to activate your gift to the world. You have a gift. Amen. You have a purpose in your life. Jesus put it in you before you were even born. You may not speak in tongues like I do. God will use you in a different way than he uses me. But it's just as great and just as needed. I don't want to leave anybody to leave out of here today without being blessed and somebody praying for them, Lord, you have their way. Bring forth that which was you put in them. Okay? That's what you're going to pray over one another. Lord, just bring forth what you put in them to the world. You're God's gift to the world. We are to uplift one another. Yes. We're not here to condemn the world. I don't want condemnation in this church. There is, therefore, no condemnation. condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus. Why? We've been set free. Yes. We've been redeemed. But God's going to start using you in the marketplace. He's going to use you outside of these four walls in a greater way. It's not about here. It's about us getting what we need here and going out there in your daily life. We give God every service to arrange it just like he wants from now on. But today he wants you to get used to laying hands on somebody. We read the word to begin with. We're supposed to build each other up. And how do we build each other up? One of the ways you do that is you bless them. We need to receive blessings. We need to start giving blessings in this house. Okay? Say I'm not worthy. Let me tell you, when you're redeemed, <laughs> Jesus says you're worthy. I said, you've been redeemed. You're not who you used to be. I am redeemed. But we have to break off the chains that bind us, the old past, whatever binds you to keep you from being set free. And we start by activating others, praying for others. So would you stand? While you're standing there, I want you to close your eyes and hold on to the chair in front of you. If there was a time in your life that you remember the love of your youth when you first received Christ, when you first were saved, the joy, the excitement, the conviction, the power, the uncontainable joy in your heart. Remember that. It's a time where I was most happiest. And I long to be right back there. Not for the thrills and chills and giggles and 
but for the desire, the steadfastness, the uncompromising where I checked everything that I'd done to make sure that it was right. Where I, I questioned everything that came before me to make sure that it was lined up with the Word. Where I started changing the things in my life to line up with God's Word. Remember that time. Bring back your first love, the love of your youth, as the word calls it. Mm. And look at, okay, fast forward a little bit. Do you still have that joy? Do you still have that passion? Or have you let it drift away and become numb to it? If you've never known it, then it's here waiting for you today. Oh gosh, it is here waiting for you. And it's better than any drug you'll ever take. Any whiskey you'll ever drink. Any bungee jump you'll ever jump. It's the greatest. Because it's from God. Because it is God in you. That's when He... He comes alive in you. That's whenever he starts taking a hold of the steering wheel and driving for a while. I, I'm asking us to remember this. Remember how you used to, how you felt when you first come with him. When you first truly sought after him, and he filled you with His Spirit. The joy and the peace, the excitement, the uncontainable words that you wanted to share with everybody you seen. The forgiveness. Becoming worthy again. Or worthy for the first time. And knowing that it was nothing that you ever done. It wasn't by your works. But by His love. When you finally get the revelation of what's going on. That He truly loves you. How great that moment is. confirmation Lord was talking to me about the first church and it, that you left your first love robots or, make, or fire fire for me our God is a consuming fire he wants to burn off the chef you know as, as gold is to the furnace and silver to the refiner so is a man to praise and, if, and this secret of entering in these gates with thanksgiving. And the psalm says, Lift up your heads, O you gates, even lift them up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory will come in. It's just, you know, we, we repent, we ascend the hill, we worship and we praise, and He comes in, and for that day He gives us a part. And it's about, it's, worship, it's true worship when you want to serve the King. It's true worship. And this little fire, Becky doesn't know this, but when, when God started the ministry, TNT Revival Ministries, that was what was prophesied over the ministry. That little fires coming together, creating a huge explosion. You know, that's... Who, nobody's going to force you to enter in. Nobody's going to force you to come to the Lord. He's made a way. He's given us abundant life. He come to give us an everlasting, abundant life. That's, that's the key. And, and, and 
that abundant life, that beautiful life, that wonderful, glorious life starts with you entering in. You, you repent of your sin. You plead the blood of Jesus. You're thankful because of salvation. You praise Him for the great, glorious work. Lord, let me share this, and I'm going to share it real quick. Becky, years ago, we had a sister Phyllis that was in the church here. And every time before service, she would read Scripture. Now, nobody talks about anybody with the other person in this church. It all just fits together. It's always been like that here. It's one of the most amazing things about this church. It's just awesome. And it would happen every time. So Becky got the job. Phyllis got married and left with Brother Garland. And Becky, Pastor John looked and said, You are the one. <laughs> So I happened to be on vacation that week, and that week Becky was fasting and praying and praising and laying prostrate on the floor and worshiping God. I mean, just, and I'm like, wow, God, I've been waiting 20 years for this, you know? So anyway, come Sunday morning, she's in my study, and she's staring at the Bible. I said, well, how's it going? You got the scripture yet? She goes, oh, I don't believe God likes talking to me. I try and I try and try and I just can't hear anything. And I sat down next to her and I said, you know, I, I believe God's talking to all of us all the time. The problem isn't with God. The problem's with us. I said, I'll tell these truck drivers that if you want to tune into the frequency to talk to somebody, then you've got to be on the right channel. You, gotta be, you have to be on the right channel and you have to have your equipment in order. If, you, if your antenna's broke or your, or your radio's out of tune or if you're on the wrong channel, you're not going to be able to talk to them. I said, God has a, a, one frequency and one frequency only that he chooses to communicate with man on. It's called holiness. And it comes through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. I said, now if you're out of tune with God, if you're, if you're off the channel, he can still overpower and talk to you, but it's not the flow. You understand? It doesn't communicate freely back and forth. I said, the way we get in tune with that, it says if we confess our sin, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That gives us right standing. That gives us righteousness with God. That gives us holiness with God because of the shed blood of Jesus Christ our Lord. And then, we, and then he said, because it's a formula. He gave it to us today. We enter in his gates with thanksgiving in our heart. We come into his courts with praise. I've taught this formula over and over and over and over again. And people, if they persevere, if they will persevere, if they will just diligently go, God will speak to you. He will enter in with you and converse with you. He will give you revelation. He will give you purpose. He will give you a word. Now, you might not like that word. You might not like that assignment. There's many who quit doing it altogether because they didn't like it. But Christ, I don't think he much cared about going to the cross, to tell you the truth, but he loved his Father and he loved us. It troubled him so to be obedient to the cross, but he did it out of his love. I'm telling you, I'm pleading with you. If you want this little fire to burn in you, the fire of glory, if you want purpose in your life, if you want a new pep in your step and you want to wake up and find something that will just absolutely blow your mind for that day and just thrill or comfort or glorify the Father that day, that day for somebody somewhere, then enter in. When you enter in and you come to church, and you're coming to church, enter in and find out what God wants you to bring. It may be one word. It'll change somebody's life forever. Maybe a song. Maybe a, a teaching, a prayer, whatever it may be. But anyway, to, to finish the story with Becky, she went out. She entered in this prescribed. We prayed for her. She come back running into the office. She says, "Where's the talk about all the names of God's Bible?" I said, "What?" She says, "Where's the talk about all the names of God's in the Bible?" I said, "Well, it talks about throughout the whole Bible." I go, "But I got this book on the shelf by K. Author." She goes, "Let me see that book." So she snatched the book and she scurried off to the bedroom. I went back in the bedroom, and and I said, "See, God's a quickening spirit. He'll quicken you. 
Your knower will know. And when your knower knows, you just know that you know, you know. And nobody can tell you different because you know you know. So anyway, she goes, I can't get off this one page. I said, excuse me? My hair starts standing up on end. She goes, excuse me? She's like, every time I turn the page to go somewhere else, I have to come back here. I said, did I not tell you that God is a quickening spirit and he will quicken you? I said, let me read what you're reading. So I read it, and it was out of the book of Isaiah, on Isaiah 43, about one of the names of God. I said, that's the one. I got a witness there. That's the one you're supposed to read. You're supposed to read that today at the church. So we come. We did Sunday school. We opened up. Becky read her scripture. We did the praise and worship. John goes to preach. He says, Becky, I thought you were going to preach my sermon today. Everybody open up to the book of Isaiah, page 40, uh, chapter 43. It's for whosoever will. Why did he let you be born again? Why did he give you salvation? It says so you can enter into the kingdom. Amen? So you can see into the kingdom. That's what it's about. In the, the kingdom is where the fire, where the glory is. And he wants you to take just a little piece of that brand of fire, that glory, like that coal we got hanging up on the wall there, right? Bring that fire back with you and share it with the others. It all fits together. It all comes together. It all confirms. This is the move of God, guys. God's confirming the move of God in your very ears today. And you have a choice. You have a choice. When we bless, we don't need to leave Carson out. Kara, Aaron. From the, they are just as important in this kingdom, in this place, in this church as anyone else. You see, Jesus said, out of the mouth of babes, praise is perfected. And we've had the, a word from the throne of God through children in this place. Now, we're going to bless one another. I don't want to leave it, anybody leave out of here without being blessed. Hmm. By the authority of what God has placed in us, we bless you out of the house of the Lord. You'll be the head, not the tail. You'll be blessed in the country, blessed in the city. You'll be blessed in the supermarket. You'll be blessed when you go to shop with bargains. But your purpose will always be you are to bless those around you. The cashier that waits on you is not to be condemned, but to be blessed. No matter how bad service, you can change the restaurant if you're just blessed. You are there to change the atmosphere. You are God's aroma, his perfume that he wants the world to breathe. You have a special gift. People are coming to you. They're drawn to you. And they're there for you just to simply love and bless. As you love them, God will share himself with them. Gospel is not hard to share if you just love somebody because it takes down that wall they have. Only love can break down walls. But you have to learn to start loving yourself. You have to start seeing, I am redeemed. I am set free. And as long as that becomes your song, you'll be able to flow.
but the heart of God. It's not about works of righteousness which we have done, but it's according to His grace, His mercy, and His love. He has placed us in heavenly places. Not because we're worthy, but because he's worthy. So would you stand to your feet?